Do you recall the first time you made money buying crypto? I remember first experimenting with crypto buying Dogecoin and forgetting all about it, then seeing my return of 10x. Wow, I was hooked at that point. In this episode, I wish to cover the simple question of cryptocurrency and how to explain to someone that doesn't know much about it. My name is Crypto Andy, and it is my privilege to discuss what is cryptocurrency. That being said, what is covered in this episode is for educational purposes only and should not be considered financial advice. I'll give you a short answer that I first heard courtesy of Harry Dent. Cryptocurrency is the digitization of money and financial assets. The detailed answer is that cryptocurrency is a form of digital currency that uses cryptography to secure transactions, control the creation of new tokens, and verify the transfer of assets, much like a bank payment network. However, cryptocurrency operates independently of any central bank or government, and its transactions are recorded on a decentralized ledger that are known as blockchain, and they are held in digital wallets. The core values of cryptocurrency are financial freedom, independence, decentralization, and ownership in peer-to-peer -peer transactions. Crypto's utility comes in its ability to secure transactions that are digitally signed using complex mathematical algorithms which provide authenticity, integrity, and confidentiality. Cryptocurrency has the potential to empower individuals in developing countries by giving them access to cross-border transactions at the fraction of the price of traditional banking. This is possible due to the blockchain's productivity improvements and its programmability. It cuts out the middleman, lowering fees, thus reducing friction in the transactions to the benefit of the users. If you have ever wired money locally or sent it internationally, there are steep fees associated with those transactions. Only transferring large amounts of money makes sense in current conditions because the banking system was made for the exchange of money between high net worth individuals or countries. It was not made for the average person and especially not for the people in the third world. Cryptocurrency resolves this gap in the market. The first ever successful cryptocurrency was Bitcoin, introduced in 2009 in response to the global economic collapse and liquidity crisis the world experienced. At this point, you may have to explain what Bitcoin, aka BTC, is. Bitcoin is the grandfather of all cryptocurrency. As mentioned previously, Bitcoin works by the transfer of payments in a decentralized way. How Bitcoin does this is by a consensus mechanism where all BTC miners agree on what goes on Bitcoin's blockchain, also called a ledger. That ability to agree is called proof of work, where miners using complex computers solve complex cryptographical problems. When all computers agree on transactions, it's then added to the blockchain, aka the decentralized ledger. Bitcoin's mold is followed in a general sense by all other cryptocurrency. BTC is used primarily for payments, store value, as an intermediary of exchange for other crypto tokens. After Bitcoin, Ethereum is the next largest crypto and it works very differently because BTC has its own blockchain ledger. What Ethereum does is create a platform for other cryptos. Those other cryptos are called ERC20 tokens. Instead of requiring miners for each and every blockchain to transfer assets, Ethereum is an internet computer that transfers tokens. It acts like a miner for the cryptos and its platform. This allows the other projects to focus on development and utility. They don't have to spend time building the infrastructure. An example would be a storefront in a mall. The business owner didn't have to build the mall. They just focus on their product or service and make it the best it can be. When a crypto project provides infrastructure, it's called a layer one. ETH, Ethereum's token, is used to pay fees on the Ethereum platform when transferring tokens or when swapping for ERC20 tokens. This causes demand and utility for ETH. Another question you may have encountered is what is the dog coin I've heard so much about? This coin is called Doge. It started out as a parody to Bitcoin with Lego featuring the Shiba Inu dog based on the Doge internet meme. Dogecoin has grown in popularity and has a community of supporters that has grown around it. Dogecoin enthusiasts are known as Sheebs. Sheeb is used for tipping, donation, and the like. 
Dogecoin epitomizes the froth playfulness of the crypto world in the same way a cult movie would. It also has backers like Elon Musk. Another project like Doge has a high volatility nature because it doesn't have the demand or utility like the others we have mentioned. Now that we have discussed some of the most high profile cryptos, the next big question is how does cryptocurrency derive its value? Ultimately, all crypto value is derived from strong adoption. This is why Bitcoin is so valuable. It's the most adopted coin out there and the most recognized. Traditional valuation for equities like stocks and bonds come from two types of analysis, fundamental analysis and technical analysis. Fundamental analysis refers to things like competitive advantage, balance sheet, customer acquisition, product development, macroeconomics, and employee talent. Think Warren Buffett, the famed fundamental investor. The way this translates into crypto is tokenomics, development team, use case, market share, hash rate, or the amount of mining activity. As an example, Bitcoin has 21 million total BTC that will ever be mined. It's constantly being developed. More and more countries have adopted BTC. There has been an increase in the hash rate and BTC's use case as a store value is being validated by users who are willing to hodl it for longer periods of time. Technical analysis is the study of price patterns and indicators to make purchasing and selling decisions. For example, BTC has a major resistance at the $31,200 level. The fact that it bounced from this resistance point is unsurprising because there were 10 points of confirmation from all the way back from December 2020. What we also see is that there is support at the $27,400 price point, although not nearly as strong as the resistance point. Looking forward, BTC could go as high as $40,000 and as low as $4,000 if things turn for the worst. If you had wanted to trade BTC in the short term, the technical analysis would be what you want to turn to. If you want to hold for the long term, you use fundamental analysis. Most traders use a combination of both, with one being more dominant. Your choice on how long you will hold onto Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency if you choose to do so determines in large part how successful you will be, and that depends on your strategy. The next question you may encounter when explaining crypto is how do I hold crypto securely? Someone may say to you, I heard your Bitcoins can be hacked and stolen. Like keeping your money in a safe at your house, it could be stolen. This is true, but it's money that is self-custodied and you control it, meaning you are responsible for its safety. Many people have crypto that has not been hacked. They store it intelligently and safely and have little to no problem. That is the whole point and the value with cryptocurrency. You have the freedom to choose what happens, when it happens, and why it happened. A lot of people out there are not willing to fully take on that responsibility. Crypto is about freedom and its other side is responsibility. The best, safest way to custody your BTC is a cold storage wallet. A device similar to a USB drive where you store your keys. Remember, BTC lives on the blockchain ledger. So what you have is keys that empower you to decide what happens to it, where it goes, what it's used for, and whether to buy and sell. Another option is a hot wallet, which is an app on your computer or phone where you can store your crypto like the Exodus wallet. Since the computer and phone are constantly on the internet, it's less safe than a cold storage wallet because hot wallets are more accessible. Those are two good options. Some people keep their crypto on exchanges or other third party affiliates. This is the worst way to keep your crypto because you don't have the keys. And remember, not your keys, not your crypto. The hacks that have happened generally occurred when people were either stupid or greedy, like FTX making terrible decisions or Mt. Gox, a Bitcoin exchange from 2014. If you have your crypto in a cold storage wallet, none of that could have happened to you. Similar to a robber stealing from a bank vault, if your money was not there, it would not have been stolen. It would be safe at home. There is a lot of identity theft, senior citizen shakedown, Nigerian princesses trying to steal your money. This happens every day in the traditional financial world and it happens in crypto as well. With the exception that you never have the option to self custody and you can't move money from your safe at home. With crypto, you can move it all in minutes anywhere in the world. 
you are empowered to do that. At this point, you may be asked, why should I own crypto? And if so, which ones? I will remind you that this is not financial advice. If you ask a professional trader that owns a crypto why he owns it, he would say as a hedge against the financial system. The percentage owned by the individual is because they don't trust centralized institutions and they want a way out if they ever needed it. Also because of the giant gains that cryptocurrency can have. There simply is not another asset that can give you as much a percentage gain of 5 to 10x in a bull run is something that is done by a lot of cryptos if you catch them at the right time. You will have to be smart and take profits when the time comes. Not assuming it goes up forever, which is what a lot of people do. If you're not someone that wants to trade, you can simply hodl or hold on for dear life and you will see the price rise as cryptocurrency is still just in its infancy as an industry and has a lot of growth and maturity left, a lot of profit left. If you don't want to research and learn about crypto and just want a hedge, buy Bitcoin only. If you want a little more, buy BTC and Ethereum. If you want the big money, you must research. A good rule of thumb is to stay within projects with 500 million or more market cap. You can go to livecoinwatch.com, which defaults has coin listed by market cap and stay within the top 100. I don't recommend that you trade unless you're willing to spend major time on it consistently and are willing to learn fundamental and technical analysis.